Good afternoon, Robbie, and all those at Lily White Lane. I hope you all had a good Christmas, and I wish you all the best for the new year. Um, yeah, the question I've been asked today is my thoughts on Romero and who we may bring in in January. Um, right, the way that I look here, we could say it's unfortunate uh, that we're picking up these injuries and that we're picking up these suspensions and it's blighted us and we're still in fourth place, well we're now fifth because Man City won last night um, but with a win over Brighton tonight we go back into fourth um, but we're still within touching distance of not only the top four but the the first place as well um, we get we get dealt with a hand and our hand is 25 players for the season and within them 25 that's the only place that you can use in a squad to play We've lost Van der Ven. We've now lost Romero. Um, I don't know how quite he did it in the game, but he didn't appear back for the second half of the game against Everton. Which leaves us with... Well, there are, you can, we can tinker about, and it leaves us with possibilities. So now we've got... The obvious choices are going to be Davis, Dyer, and Emerson. Um, pick a two from them three, so to speak. But... To me, you've also got Alfie Dorrington and Ashley Phillips in the background. Now, I've I had a, a debate yesterday on my stream uh, on Talking Ball, um, where all I've been hearing lately from people is, yeah, they won't play Dor Dorrington and Phillips are too young, they're too young to play. You can't throw centre-backs into the mix in the Premier League. So I counted back with that and said, well, Kumbala from Manchester United is a 19 year old French defender and he was thrown in and got his debut for Man United against Liverpool no small team it was against Liverpool and Man United have walked away with a 0-0 draw and Kumbala played I believe the whole game at centre half uh, the other night when they beat Villa 3-2 Ten Hag made the changes and brought Kumbala on for the last 10 minutes to play to make it three three centre backs rather than the, the flat two that they had, so you know and 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 Kumbala played. If memory serves me correctly, Kumbala played against Liverpool with his partner was Lindelof. Now Lindelof, for no no disrespect to the fella, he is not first or second choice centre half at, at Manchester United. The uh, you know and the first choices can be Lisandro Martinez. Uh, Varane, uh, then you've got Harry Maguire there, but then you also got that if Malasia's fit and or and or Reguilon's fit, then he prefers to play Luke Shaw in at centre half. So, f in for intents and purposes, Lindelof is like their fifth choice centre half. Yeah, he played, and then you've got Johnny Evans there as well. Sorry, you've got Johnny Evans there as well. So, fifth or sixth choice centre half he is, and he played Kambala alongside it was either Johnny Evans or. Lindelof, memory, I can't remember, but I know it's one of them too. So, you've played a 19 year old with a fifth or sixth choice at centre back, centre back. So, what do we have? Right, we have um, D Davis, who, for all intents and purposes, is currently our third choice centre half. So, why can't one of Phillips or Dorrington be thrown in uh, to play? I mean, I go back to the Kumbala situation. Kambala plays in the under-21s, or has played in the under-21s. Man United are not doing much in the under-21s. Tottenham have won nine on the bounce. Their mainstays at centre-backs have been Phillips and Dorrington, uh, or for the early part of the season, until they've been involved in first-team squads. So, he wasn't a name that people knew about. It wasn't a name that sp sprung out to people. He wasn't got much coveted at all. But he's gone and played a game for Man United, so why can't Dorrington and Phillips play a game for Tottenham. I have a feeling that for tonight's game, um, it's only a feeling, I mean, you, you never know because um, Ange threw us a curveball by putting Brennan Johnson in from the start in the North London derby. So he, he does tweak teams and, and he'll throw a curveball at you. But tonight, for all intents and purposes, the only way that I can see him going tonight is... Uh, with Davis and Romero, Romero um, sorry, Davis and Romero, D Davis and Royale, sorry, um, 
And that's only because the Royale's pacey. He's pacier than Dyer. I don't know whether he's pacier than Donington and pacier than Phillips, but I've got a feeling that they're the two that he's going to start tonight. Um, at the end of the day, we've got a squad of 25 players. We've got so many injuries. Uh, but then you've got the likes of Newcastle at the moment. Brighton have got the t 10 injuries themselves as well. Um, and you've got some other clubs that have got injuries. So it's not just us, it's hitting other teams as well. It's just what you do with it. And at the moment, out of all these teams that have got the injuries, at the moment, and long may it continue, we have been picking up points and we seem to be doing well. And, and that's that's factored by the position of the league that we're in. If you look at us, Brighton, Newcastle, with all these injuries, we're like top of the pile between the three of us with the injuries that we've got. Um, I think the interesting thing for me is, is that for the game tonight, um, and I'm digressing a bit because I'm, I'm talking about the game tonight as well because you asked me a question about centre -offs. Um It's interesting for me because I think that he'll play with the, that, that back five that I've just, well, the other two full-backs pick themselves as a keeper. Uh, I think the front three will pick themselves as well. It'll be Son, Richarlison and Brendan Johnson. But it's the midfield that I, I'm interested in. I think I know what Poster Cog will go for. However, what I would rather see is Saar playing the six, the Celso playing the eight, Cooley playing the ten. But I've got a feeling that uh, Skip, he'll, he'll, he'll put Skip or Hoiberg in one of them three positions and we won't get to see the cell side. But, uh, who knows? Um, as for <laughs> Poster Cogley's presser yesterday, he turned around and said that he wants business done early. Now, that's the biggest scream to the board that I've heard from any manager. He wants the business done early. Not let's wait to see whether we can get a better price at the end of the window. We need the players in now. Um, we've got an FA Cup tie coming up on the 5th of January. Then we only played twice, thankfully, in January in the league. But with all the players that we've got out injured and suspended, it's important that we do make these signings nice and early, get them integrated into the squad. And by bare minimum, either they play against Burnley or bare minimum, they're integrated and have had time on the pitch with Ange and get picked or, or, or ready for selection for the Man United game on the 15th. Um, who would I like to see, to see in, you ask me? Um, I don't really know because we, we've been banded with so many centre-backs at the moment. Um, but Lloyd Kelly, he's injured. Do I fancy Lloyd Kelly? Not really. I know the home quite a bit of business and that. Don't really fancy Lloyd Kelly. Um, if I'm allowed to pick my choice. Um, Tossin, Tossin's playing back. In, he's come back from injury. He's playing himself back into form. There's still no new contract on the horizon. Um, I'm not sure that Fulham will let him go in January. And that could possibly be one that we then look at the free option in the summer. So it frees up funds for other positions. And then the other two that we've been really heavily linked with at the moment is John Clare Tadebo of Nice and Radu Dragasin of Bologna. Um, I have seen... Uh, to Debo play a few times um, not extensively but I've seen him play a few times on um, in, the, in the French National League in Liga uh, I haven't seen much of I haven't seen nothing in fact of Dragosin unless I look at the reels um, but by all accounts from the scouts and from you know the word on the street from all these scouts and all these in the nose is that uh, Dragosin apparently has a higher ceiling because he's younger has a higher ceiling and he's quicker than Tadebo. However, Tadebo to me, because I haven't seen Dragos in play, Tadebo seems to be an accomplished player. The only fear that I had for Tadebo um, is that Nice are owned by Ineos and Ineos has just bought a Man United and Man United would probably be good looking, look, looking for centre halves. It would be a nice, easy deal, like a switch over just to bring in, um, to, for Man United to take Tadebo across uh, from Nice. Um, but with us, I fear that if we're looking at him, which are no doubt we are looking because we are Tottenham looking and Tottenham feeling, we're not Tottenham buying, um, then Tadebo does look like a, a, a buy that we, would, that we would look at. But I've got a feeling that since word has come out that we're looking at him, I reckon his price has gone up by like 20 million. And if that's the case, if you thought you were going to get a deal for 30, 25, 30 million, you're now looking nearer to the 50 million mark, I reckon, for him. Um, 
it's just the way the world is, you know, as soon as someone knows that we everyone knows that we're in desperate need of centre backs and they'll just bump the price up and because it's Ineos, they could probably put the price up anyway uh, for buying clubs. But if they wanted to turn to Man United, Man United would get him for like ten million because it's like inter club stuff. Um Dragerson is only twenty one I think, he's remaining uh he's twenty one years old. I don't know what kind of fee he would command, but the one thing that I would like to see is whoever we do end up going for, and I'm sorry I've not given you a firm answer on this, but whoever we do end up going for, for me, in my opinion, has to be a player that doesn't come to warm the bench up, doesn't come to become a squad player, so to speak. I want him to be a player that will challenge for the centre-half position. In fact, I'd like to have two centre-halves there that would challenge for the centre-half position. So, therefore, our centre-halves have always got to be on their game. Um, one centre half would be brilliant. We need one, but if we could get two, I'd be even happier still. Um, I think that in all other positions, that we're pretty much covered. We've got like a sport for choices, if you like, um, that we can bring in and we can permutate the front six, but the back four we can't permutate. We need to bring in, uh, we need, need at least two quality centre halves, but. Or think it would only get one, um, but that one person has to come in and has to be challenging uh, to play week in, week out, and not come to warm the bench up. Um, and tonight, I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to Tottenham. I always look forward to Tottenham playing, um, but tonight, I, yeah, I still predict that we're going to win. Um, but yeah, we need to make our signings nice and early. So with that. I thank you all very much. Keep liking and subscribing to Lily White Lane. And if you want to come over and give us a shout out, talk and ball, you're more than welcome to do so. And with that, I'm going to say, come on you Spurs.